and welcome again to Geocasts, where we'll teach you all about using Google Maps to build better apps. I'm Lawrence, and in this video, I'm going to talk all about building an interactive, place-based experience using the Places API. It's a simple game, and you'll be communicating with Alyssa, this woman who's trapped in a parallel dimension, and, well, I'll just let her explain what you have to do. There was an accident. I'm trapped in an alternate dimension, which is literally right next door to yours. Parts of my dimension are leaking into yours, and if you can get to their location, I can fix it and get myself home. So how does this work as an app? It's been made user customizable, so you can pick any three places in the world, assign a code to them, and then when you share that code with your friends, Alyssa will guide them through those three places to solve puzzles that will get her home. The Google Places API supports over 100 million places around the world, so you've lots to choose from. Here you can see some games that I've designed stored in Firebase. So, for example, if you were to use the code GOOGKIR, you'd go to these three places to rescue Alyssa. Or, if you were to choose the code Drahida, you'd be guided to these three. The Places API has a user interface widget called the Place Picker, which allows you to pick your desired places off the map. In this video, you'll see how to use the place picker to choose your three places and how to store them in Firebase. In the next video in this series, we'll look at how you use the Places API to detect your current location to see if it matches the desired place. As it uses real-world places, the Places API is a terrific way to make it user-friendly, powerful, and easy to build for. It's really nice of you to help me out. Thanks. You're welcome. The Places API is designed to make your app stand out with detailed information about over 100 million places around the world across a wide range of categories, and it uses the same database as Google Maps. Not only that, the Places API has place detection, giving you the ability to tell if your user is in one of those locations. That makes it easier. I can just tell you to go to a specific location like, say, the Seattle Space Needle, instead of dealing with latitude and longitude or addresses. That's right. And the Places API, remember, can detect if your user is there. Well, of course I'm there, silly. <laughs> right. But before we get to detecting the places, let's look at how we can build an app where you can configure the places that you want to play in. We'll use the Place Picker control to pick three places and store their place IDs in Firebase along with a unique code. You can share that code with your friends, so when they play the game, Alyssa will tell them to go to those places, like this. The first part is here. Please go, and I'll let you know once you're close enough. The Place Picker control allows me to give my end users a standard, user-friendly way of selecting the places that this game will be played in. So, for the game, I decided that it would use three places. You can see how it works here. Every time I press a button, I get the place picker along with Google Maps, allowing me to choose a place. I'll pick the Space Needle first. You're still there, right, Alyssa? Roger that. Good. So then I can pick some other places. And if you really don't like your friends, you can make them locations that are really far away, right? That's right. And of course, as you can see here, these strings are the identifiers for those places on Google. Later, when we scan for the device location, we'll find nearby places, and we can compare to see if we're close to these. So how does this work in code? First of all, in order to use the place picker, you need your app to have the access find location permission. So make sure you have that. Docs on how to do that are right here. Next, make sure you have the location libraries from play services included in your build.gradle. Now, in an Android activity, and as you can see, mine's called Create Game Activity, you can use a Place Picker Intent Builder to create a Place Picker Intent. Start this, and the picker will run for you. If you're wondering what that ID parameter is, this game allows you to define three places, so it's just an integer for one, two, or three. Once the user selects a place, on activity result will fire, and it will contain an intent with the returned data. You can then turn this into a place object with the placepicker.getPlace function. 
the place object exposes the Google identifier for that location as the place ID, which you can then read with that method. It also has the description for the place, which you can access with a place.getName and cast that into a string. It's really that simple. To close the loop, here's how you can save the three place IDs to Firebase under a game code. I simply create a node with the game code and store these values under that. Do note that there are restrictions to saving data from the Places API in your own database. Before distributing an app that uses the Places API, be sure to understand the policies. They're linked right here. So you've completed the first part of this task. Well done. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to use the Places API to determine if your users are close enough to the desired place to unlock the next part of the game. You can learn more about the Google Places API at this page and see more geocast videos on the Google Developers channel. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.